The information provided on this podcast is intended to be educational and informational only and is not considered to be formal legal advice. The listener should not take or refrain from taking action based on its content. Any listener in need of legal opinion upon which to rely in decision-making should consider formally engaging an attorney to review relevant facts in detail and examine the pertinent law as it applies to those facts. Welcome to Real Estate Milestones, where we explore fascinating topics in commercial real estate with knowledgeable industry experts. I'm your host, Ben Malik, and I'm a young real estate professional who is passionate about adding value to people's lives through the incredible power of real estate. My goal is to help you discover what the heck is going on in the industry and how you can get involved. This is Real Estate Milestones, where your future in real estate lies just around the corner. Hi, y'all. This is Ben Malik coming to you from Copenhagen, Denmark. We have Misi Liu, from, who's joining us from Arkansas. She moved to the U.S. from China when she was 16 years old to pursue a degree and a career. And however, she has now realized that she could not pursue her life goals with just a nine-to-five job. So she founded the real estate firm Life Mission Capital. Now she has 158 units in her portfolio, and her life mission is to help others improve their financial literacy, especially kids. Um, so could you tell me a little bit about your story and your background and um, kind of touch on your, your first milestone in real estate and your most recent one as well? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me here, Ben. Um, my story real in the U.S. really started uh, when I came to the U.S. and I was 16 as a high school exchange student. And my parents sent me here because I wanted to and I wanted to just have a different life, different from just the stereotypical path of going to school in China and um, going through this really intense college entrance exam, uh, which is so intense that you're studying from like 8 a.m. to like 9, 10 p.m. at night. Um, Of course, you have breaks in between, but that's literally all you do uh, every day and summertime sometimes too. I just didn't feel like that was the only path to success. So I came to the U.S. um, and I learned a lot about the culture and different path of success. Um, And then with that, I went into college, studied supply chain marketing, got a job and um, got my master's degree while I was studying as well in data analytics, which is one of the great professions uh, right now. well, I, I'm very grateful for all my professional experiences. I did realize that be, one of the things I, if it was kind of a void uh, emotionally, a hole in my heart is I just haven't ever really been able to spend time with my family and they're all in China. And every year if I do go home and which I try to go every year due to COVID, I haven't been able to go for two and a half years, but every year when I go home, it's only two, three weeks that I can spend with them and across all my family members just didn't feel like it was enough. I felt like I was missing key moments of life with them. And uh, I didn't feel like my nine to five job alone can really help me get to spend more time with them. That's really, really when I started thinking about financial freedom for myself. And once I started diving into it, I realized that um, there's many paths to do it. I try to do day trading. I try to do investment in stocks market. Um, you know, I think those are great instruments along with cryptos. But I think I was uh, wasn't emotionally set up for it when the stocks and the um, cryptos going up and down so violently and. Yeah, my portfolio would lose five, ten percent sometimes in the day, especially when things. When I started really thinking about this was during the pandemic, and if you recall, <laughs> right at the beginning of the pandemic, stocks and really dropped a lot due to all this uncertainty um, with the COVID. So that's when I started to slowly get into real estate. So my first milestone was actually my first home purchase. It's a personal home purchase, and. Um, I basically house hacked the unit. It's a single family home and I had two roommates, which were my um, best friends in college that we lived together and we shared. And a year later, I moved out, outside of that home and uh, purchased a, a duplex, also house hack as well. And uh, from that, um, I realized, wow, you know, I'm starting to get a little bit more passive income from those investments and it really helps out, especially when I do Airbnb a little bit. I was like, you know, this is helping me, getting me closer to my financial freedom number. And, you know, I actually feel like the, the, 
the goal I set to be spending more time with my family is more possible. So I started to learn more about multifamily because I realized that with single family with duplex is just so not scalable. One time I had a tenant who I inherited. They basically destroyed the place uh, when they moved out. I had to call junk removal. That kind of tells you how bad it was. So I was like, I can't deal with this a hundred times with a hundred single family homes, even if I hire someone to manage, it just doesn't seem to be very scalable dealing with issues like this. And uh, so I learned more about family. That's when I started to dive into it. Um, I started with a passive investment, um, really understanding a lot of underwriting, how things work, networking with the right people. And uh, that's my next, and then that's kind of my second milestone. And then the most recent milestone is that we closed on the 48 unit in Chesapeake, Virginia. It is a heavy value add property um, that we're doing a lot of renovations on it. We actually acquired it, finished closing last week. We already started on some of the units already. So we're very happy for our investors uh, who participated in the opportunity with us. And uh the next milestone for next year is to help with more investors who are uh, in similar journey as me uh, to gain their financial freedom and really helping them understand financial literacy and maybe even their kids. That's one of the areas I'm passionate about. Kids, it could be in the U.S., it could be in China. I just want them to see that there's alternative path rather than just going through the traditional school. There's value in education, but education can come in many different forms. So I hope that my story and also just being able to help them understand those concepts can help them get to that level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow, that's an amazing story. And a lot of that really resonated with me. I mean, I, I've been in the stock market since I was 13 years old. Um, and I mean, I'm definitely looking to, to get out for some of the similar reasons that you have. And um, definitely want to be more in control and kind of, you know, more a participant in, in my investments, definitely. And also bypass some of the, the fluctuations and uncertainty with that. But um, I mean, also, I guess I was pretty interested in, in learning a little bit more about um, your experience in China and how being in America is different and kind of some of the cultural differences between here and there. And, um, you know, what, what uh, and it'd be cool. I think a lot of people can learn a lot from that. So I'd love to hear some more. Yeah. Thank you for the question, Ben. I think there's a lot of cultural differences. Uh, when I first came here at such a young age, <laughs> not really speaking English the best, I, I definitely ha- had uh, run into some. Um, I would say one of the bigger differences is just the traditional path. We're so, um, you could say, uniform thinking that school is the best way to go. And my dad still instills that in my brother a lot. My dad is actually kind of entrepreneur too. He has some of his own real estate portfolio, but he also wants to just be conservative and um, make sure that his son or me really have a safe path, something to follow. So schooling is like one of the most conservative ways that he thinks about is most safest way, but it is actually not. You know, we're let's look at the better mortgage uh, company that they just fired 600 people via Zoom, a three-minute Zoom call. So so I think on one side, I might understand that, but like a lot of the other parents in China, they just basically ingrain it into their kid's mind. You have to study. You have to study. That's the only way you can get into better school, better college, better job, a better life. <laughs> it's like it never stops there, but it all starts from school. And... Um, a lot of us in high school, we would go to dormitory schools where you would just go from studying. So you basically have three three points all in the all in the dormitory school. You just go from cafeteria to dorms to um, to the classrooms. It's uh, similar to campus, but but uh, in campus you only have so many classes in a day. But with us, we would have. So it's all like the subject that you need to go to test for. And think about the population in China. You know, we have 1.6 billion population in China, and there is just no effective way to select talent. And because of that, people have to test, test. And it's a lot of pressure on those kids, you know. We're talking about 17-year-old kids, 18-year-old kids. Uh, they're just not, sometimes not, not ready for those type of pressure. Um and, uh, and they were never, sometimes they go to school and get out of school. They don't know how to find, handle their finances. They don't know how to invest. 
they go to work, they can't purchase homes because um, China in big cities especially have a very high cost of living, worse than New York, San Francisco at times too. A normal wage employee just can't afford those things. So how, how are they going to be able to leave? And so they don't know how to invest. They just work, work, work. So they're not thinking about the bigger picture. So I just really want to help them understand those. And that's one of my passions. And that's one of the cultural difference. And of course, you know, there's also other ones. But in, in terms of the Asian culture in general, you'll find a lot more um I was, you would call it conformity, right? So a lot of people doing similar things, uh, similar path. But I see that is also being relieved a little bit, yeah, being changed a little bit. But that is definitely one of the big differences. You know, in, instead of the U.S., there's a lot more individuality. People want to be different, and they're not afraid to be different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's really powerful, and, and I really appreciate you sharing. I thought one thing that resonated with me was how you mentioned um, I guess you go from the dorm to the cafeteria to class. I feel like some people in America in university might feel like it's similar, but you know, we have the added aspect of partying on the weekend or like, I don't know if that's, <laughs> if that's part of the culture too, but um, yeah. Not, I mean, not at all. <laughs> no, it's, it's very, not very few instances. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, so that's really interesting. It's like, so there's similarity where like, there's a lot of the same stuff, but I mean, there's an element of, of individuality, but ultimately a lot of people in America feel like they're following the same path where, you know, they're going to, you know, they're, they're ruining the day that they have to go out of college and get a job because they're going to be doing that until they're 65 and, you know, watching their money in the stock market fluctuate or, or not even watching, probably just letting the broker watch it. And um, yeah, I mean, it's cool to even in America know that there's, there's other possibilities as well, um, which is, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty interesting, um, you know, perspective. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I, it looks like you, you're thinking about the right things and you, you found a, a, a good way forward, but I kind of wanted to learn about how, how you found real estate and if you could tell me more about that, that'd be awesome. Yeah, my family actually uh, developed a building in China along with a few other partners. So I've always understood real estate, but the real estate in China is just so different from the U.S., um, it's taking out loans is a lot harder. Interests are much higher. And uh, a lot of people just uh, basically borrow money from their friends and family and build buildings versus here where a lot of things are a lot more transparent and um, um, better for the business environment. So my dad um, had this building and um, uh, along with a few other partners and they rented out some sections to a hotel. And uh, that hotel didn't pay rent for a while because it was 2009, economic crisis. And that's when I actually started coming to the U.S. to study. And uh, that's kind of my first exposure to real estate. And it was just like not something I want to get into because it was just not a good experience with the crisis and not paying tenants. But as I try to dabble into other asset classes, like I mentioned, um, stocks and cryptos. Emotionally, I was just not ready uh, for those type of assets, not just because they're very volatile, um, but also because there's no real value behind it sometimes, depending on the company you're investing um, and the cryptos that you're investing. so that's when I started to actually get into real estate first to just to buy a home for myself to live in. So one of the things I want to encourage to the other people is if they're trying to get started in real estate, you know, don't be afraid to take a first step. Just do something small. It's those small steps that make you take bigger steps and bigger steps. Everyone's at a different place. I really wasn't thinking about investing. I was just thinking about I want a place to live and I don't want to pay mortgages. I'm sorry, I don't want to pay rent anymore. But once you get a taste of things and you sort of just to want to have more that's when i got into okay so how about another duplex and when i see a scalability issue how about bigger multifamily how can i get to bigger multifamily so start asking questions um how but meanwhile getting started but then once you want to ask how but also ask who um like right now i'm in different mentorship programs and networking with different people who can help me get to where i want to go and help and i can help them get to where they want to go 
So that's kind of where I got started, just by taking a baby step, and then the rest is just figuring out who and how. Yeah, I really like that point because I think it's a it's a really powerful way of thinking because I I've really tried to internalize it myself. You know, like just for example, if I find something I, I like to purchase, and say, um, oh, I can't afford that. Instead, every time I ask, how can I afford that? And and just by making it an active step, you can learn a lot and you can um you know figure out solutions rather than just pulling you off your mind and saying you can't do it. I think that applies with everything. And then the fact that you in, input that that who also, it's like sometimes you don't have enough time to do everything by yourself, but you can ask who can help me do this. And um, you know, there, there's a lot of opportunities to align incentives with different partners and create opportunities where everyone's adding value and, and gaining value, but um couldn't have done it nearly as effectively by himself. So since you have a, a good good grasp of that concept, then it's something that I'm, I'm hoping to learn a lot about too. Um, so could you tell me a little bit more about Life Mission Capital? It sounds like you have a pretty cool business going and a, a pretty good purpose. Yeah, I've spent a lot of time trying to figure out the name and asking internal questions like, you know, why I really want to do what I want to do. Um, yes, the personal financial freedom piece is nice, but there's many other paths I want to, I can get to it and we'll just get to it. But what's the bigger goal there for me? Who do I really want to help? And one big piece, uh, that's my life mission is just to help others improve their financial literacy. So they don't have to, um, they can know more than what I used to know. Similar to you, you're exposed to so many different concepts right now because of others giving you the opportunity. And I want to give the opportunity to kids even younger. And one of the nonprofit I like to partner with is called Junior Achievements. And I encourage all the people, whether they're parents or not, check out that program. Um, we basically partner with them and uh, we go into usually elementary school to high school and teach kids on different entrepreneurship, financial literacy, budgeting, taxes, all those concepts. And depending on their age, we'll tailor the activities differently. And uh, usually they're very fun activities versus just like, let me show you a PowerPoint. <laughs> so it's really engaging their brain kind of uh, subconsciously and let them think about those things. And I really believe those concepts and things help them and their career and their future a long way. And uh, I want to work with uh, um, the program I told you about junior achievement in China as well. Um, so the kids in China can have more understanding of just one path, more than just one path. Um, and uh, even right now, I like to help with adults learning about it, too. I still work a full-time job at Walmart, and uh, I started a real estate investment club there. We have about 400 members right now. I just started about two or three months ago. And I started it because I saw such a strong need and also desire from people wanting to learn more about investments in general, but specifically real estate investments, you know, given the stability that we see in that asset more than any other assets. And also the tax benefits, scalabilities and so many possible and positive things. So I started the club. We just invite and uh, different guest speakers talking about different topics that's interesting to them. And we network, we learn from each other. And uh, next year, I'm really hoping and also planning right now to engage with different um, clubs within work to even scale that bigger to impact more people. Um, so, yeah, so that's my, my mission, my life mission capital. That's my mission. And uh, in this process, I can help people who want to invest passively into real estate um, through life mission capital. We can help them do that. We essentially uh, acquire assets and do value add on them, like fixing up the interior or exterior and really help um, the value of the property to go up, not only just during sale or refinance, but appreciation so that our customers and investors don't have to worry about tenants or toilets and they can focus on what matters to them, whatever their life mission is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. And uh, it sounds like you really know how to align um, incentives and I guess align, you know, yeah, like the goals of yourself and with, with everyone who you work with and um, interact with. So that's, that's really cool. And um, I guess if you could tell me a little bit about how, um, I guess, about how networking and um, 
you know, kind of learning through alternative ways besides just through school has helped you? It sounds like it definitely has been a, a big part of your, your journey so far. Uh, so your question was on networking? Or yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, either way, if you wanted to take the, the networking side of that or just alternative methods of learning. But I just sounds like you learn through networking mm-hmm. and through other other platforms. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's mostly networking, attending meetups, reading books. Um, because in college, it's essentially that you read textbooks, you talk to teachers, you talk to students, you collaborate, learn from each other. So I feel like that format hasn't really changed. Um, it's just uh, in a different environment. Um, and mentorship pro- programs, mastermind programs. Um, and also continue to sharpen my current skill set that I have in analytics, underwriting, um, networking. I used to work in sales. I used to be a buyer. So continue to continue to leverage those skill sets and continue to um, find good deals. Continue to uh, find the right operators to work with. That's also experience. That's also learning. You're always learning while you're working. So continue to sharpen those skills I already have to help investors find the right opportunities is also a learning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Because the way I got to this point in, dis- in discovering real estate and um, I guess just, you know, meeting people, it's all it all started like a whole, I guess, over a year ago, where I just would talk to, go on LinkedIn, reach out to people, talk to as many people as would be willing to pick up the phone and talk to me. I ended up learning about a lot about real estate and I ended up getting a lot of good book recommendations. And I began reading a bunch of books on my own free time and Yes, this calendar year, I've read probably around 40 books so far, which is more than 90% of the books I've probably read in my life. And I just think <laughs> that's been incredibly powerful. And I've, that's actually how we've ended up here in a, in a way, because um, I read Hunter's book and then reached out and connected me with Adam. And that's, uh, I guess, how I joined this, this community and how this podcast started. So, I mean, it opens up a lot of opportunities to network and to read and just to learn about about things on, that you're interested in because, you know, school's not always directed towards your specific interests. So it's really, you know, it's good to, you know, use networking and, and reading to drive your own learning in the way that you, that you want to do that. So, um, yeah, mm-hmm. that's really powerful. I appreciate you sharing. Yeah, and you, you know, you sharing your experience also reminds me that to bring up a point, once you learned enough on paper whether it's Udemy or books, whatever, it's important to just start taking actions. That's why I was saying about leveraging my existing skill set. Everyone has some level of skill set. It's important to take that learning to the next level and to start taking actions. So that's also learning. So don't don't just delay your actions and stay on paper. Uh, take actions. You'll learn from it too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you, you said that to me because that's something that I've known and kind of been told and like, I really want to do. And I, I've been, been kind of feeling a little anxious about just learning so much and like it's getting all stuck in my head. And like, I really want to start using it because I, I think I can, can learn a lot more. And so I, I'm really looking to, um, for opportunities to take action and hoping when I'm back in America and uh, it's in the, the real estate turf that I want to be, that I can maybe find some opportunities around my college to, to do something similar to what you, what you're doing. And uh, maybe you can some source some deals through, through my network and, continue to, to build on those capacities and uh, hopefully add a lot of value to the world. And um, I guess before I jump into the, we jump into the lightning round, I want to ask one more question. And I guess it's, what is the next mm-hmm. milestone you're looking to achieve? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the next milestone is for us to uh, be able to help out about at least uh, 50 investors in the next year to help them to get started in the space of uh, uh, passive investing so that they can focus on what matters to them, understand the power of passive income. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's, that's definitely a, a noble life mission and, and, and goal. And um, I, I wish you the best of luck in that. All right. So now it's time for the lightning round. And um, the gimmick here is that it's going to get increasingly more difficult as we go. So I hope you're ready. Um, so All the right. First one. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's go. So the first one is, what superpower would you want if you if you could choose any superpower and why? Yeah, I would choose the ability to um, just go back in time uh, 
and uh, spend time with uh, some of my loved ones at the times I couldn't due to distance or, or time. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. I would, if I could go back in time, I'd probably want to chat with Aristotle and um, <laughs> see what he has to say. <laughs> that's funny, but yeah, that's really cool. And that, that's, um, that's a good one. And then the next one is what's your favorite book and, um, or what's the one that helped you the most so far in your life? Mm-hmm. I would say the Bible. <laughs> yeah, I think the Bible has helped me the most. Just uh, so many wisdom and knowledge um, in the in the Bible and small things. And um, and I never interacted with the Bible until I came here in the U.S. And um, it's been a long journey and kind of recent journey uh, for me. Um, yeah, so I would say the Bible. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah. And then what motivates you each day to continue doing what you're doing? And, um, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. What motivates me most is um, thinking about how to create a kingdom, um, spiritually speaking, how to create a kingdom and how to use my superpower and what's the best way I can impact people. And I found that when people are actually having a sense of securities, financially speaking, they're actually more likely to perform their best and more creatively as well. So that's why I feel financial literacy is a big thing. Um, Biblically speaking, there is a lot of um, sayings that has been, you know, giving up themselves um, and still really build a kingdom, but not everyone is set up or ready for that. So I think giving people a sense of comfort, financially speaking, really helps them achieve that next level that they want to achieve spiritually as well. Yeah, that's awesome. And I I see why I can definitely keep you going and keep you inspired. That's that's very great. Yeah, it's kind of like the hierarchy of needs, if you think about that. When your physical needs and... um, eating and shouting, shelf, uh, shelter and et cetera, being met, you're more likely to achieve the next level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, th- I don't know if Maslow would say I'm at this sp- the point of learning a uh, self-actualization, but um, I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping to, to do that as soon as possible, <laughs> especially <laughs> if I, I think it's a, an age thing. I think that he didn't think that someone at my age could do it. So I'm trying to prove him wrong, but um, who knows? It's a long journey. Um, and then I guess my, the last question would be, um, what advice would you want to give someone who who might want to follow in your footsteps? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would suggest uh, get started on something after you do some learnings on whatever you want to do, whether it's in real estate. And, you know, obviously I recommend real estate and obviously I recommend multifamily. Obviously, I recommend syndications and uh Definitely do your education and uh, no more than a month or two, start taking actions. And some of the educations you can find is on my website, lifemission.com. I talk about in my book, How to Passively Invest in Apartments. So you can check out that um, you know, do whatever else reading you have to do and just start taking actions once you figure out the pros and cons, the risks and the reward, and how it really helps you to get to your goals. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, I did look at um your, the website for Life Mission Capital. And I saw you, you you wrote at least two books so far. Is that it looked yes. like? Yes. Yeah, uh-huh. it's awesome. I definitely look like very helpful information about, um you know, being a passive investor. And I definitely want to check that out and learn from that. So, um, yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, was it lifemissioncapital.com? Yes, that's correct. Lifemissioncapital.com. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And I guess, well, the, the last question would be, since I put you on the spot, I, I would let, uh, give you an opportunity to get revenge and uh, and allow you to ask me anything you'd like to ask um, about mm-hmm. myself. Yeah, where do you see yourself in ten years? Given that you you know you're unique and special, that you're not just uh, exploring nine to five job right now. You're already exploring entrepreneurship. Uh, opened up a kind of a floodgate of many opportunities. So, where do you see yourself right now, based on what you have seen in ten Definitely. years? So yeah, and for for that, um, I I whether or not I in, or I'm in a, a nine to five job, um, and I I will I'm hoping to invest in real estate and um, either passively with a job or um, or or more actively with through my own uh, company and through um, my own entrepreneurial uh, endeavors. And um, but ultimately the goal would be to reach financial freedom and by ten years. So I guess. Yeah, I want to do it in at least. I want to do it in six. 
I want to have enough cash flow that it, or that the um, cash flow exceeds the the cost of living, and that um, I have the security in that in that sense. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to get started as soon as possible, so I can take advantage of the time value of money and, and compounding, and um, hopefully be able to you know be self sufficient before starting a family that I, I can can uh, bring on a, a family and still be able to support myself and and everyone who's around me and um, I also want to help my, my my parents retire if that's what they want so they can feel the same comfort that I, that I want to feel and um, yeah I just want to I guess add value to all the people around me and continue spreading the love of real estate and spreading the, the love of of my fellow man and woman and uh, yeah and just just uh, have peace love and positivity. <laughs> Great. That's awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. You're on the right path. So congratulations. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. So um, before we sign off, I would like to give you an opportunity just to share any last thoughts and then also tell anyone listening how they can get in touch with you. Yeah. Uh, last thought is that I'm very grateful for where I'm at today and um, for my family that has given me the chance to come here, my host family that has hosted me and um, my family now as well. Um, and, uh, I just want others to be continually, uh, be grateful as well. So, um, it's easy to, um, you know, admire other success and forget that all the success you had. So continue to be grateful and be, um, aware of the small footsteps you're taking and progress you're making. And, um, feel free to get in touch with me at misi at lifemissioncapital.com or in LinkedIn. Missy Liu, M-I-C-Y-L-I-U. I'm always happy to chat anything about real estate um, or just a personal journey. Um, yeah, always happy to chat. Mm-hmm. Well, awesome, Missy. It's been a pleasure to have you on the show and it's been awesome to learn about your journey. And I think there's a lot of wisdom that you shared that um, people would, would benefit a lot from hearing. So I'm excited for, for them to share that experience with us. And um, yeah, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you so much, Ben. Talk to you later. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.